All right, Gerald W. Brister, let's continue with our series here about pipeline ruptures, things like that. Um, I'm going to tell you a little story. Um, some years ago, I think early 80s, I was uh, working in a crew and we traveled all over Mississippi and we were testing um, a, a main line, 36 inch, 375 well mostly, uh, for a major East Coast gas transmission company. Went from the Gulf of Mexico all the way up to the Eastern Seaboard. And uh, on that job, there, there was another crew a little ahead of us, and they were doing some other things. And uh, I didn't work for that company. There was another crew up there doing work, and we knew them. We'd see them, see them in cafes at night. They were um, going to uh, cut into their own line, and there were two lines for this gas company they were working for, two 36-inch lines that ran parallel to each other, and they went up through the state. At one place, one line crossed under the other one, and it took off in a different direction, okay? And uh, I don't remember all the details about it. Uh, I wasn't on the job. We just talked a little bit afterwards. And these two welders were sent there, and they were sent there to cut what they call a football in the, in the line. Supposedly the pressure was bled off of it. It was good to go. They had to go ahead to do it. And a football is on top of that pipe. You'll cut something that looks like an oval like this, like a turtle's back. And they call it a football. But first, the first cut is you heat it up and you punch through it and then you cut it out. As you're cutting it a lot of time, there's residue gas in there, particularly in the old days. And you had a helper there and he'd have a bucket full of mud and he'd be mudding that off because it would be wanting to flame up kind of like your uh, kitchen stove. And that's what you would do. Then at the end, you would cut a bigger hole uh, and they would dump a fire extinguisher seal two in there and then you'd flip that off. And that's how we made it safe to cut and weld. These guys went there and they did not know, nobody knew, nobody does these things on purpose, but they did not know that that line had crossed and they were on the loaded line. Total opposite, total mistake. They got up there and one of the tip-offs, and I'm gonna tell you this, he got up there to cut into this thing and later he said it took a long time, he thought, to heat it up. That's one of your tip-offs. It should not take a long time beyond normal if that line is empty of product, okay? So he heated it, heated it, heated it, and he finally got it hot enough to punch through it. When he punched through it, it blew the torch out of his hand, blew him off the pipe, and scared the daylights out of him. If you've ever been around a, a big pipeline, they're venting the, the gas, even a six inch line or eight inch, it's screaming. And I can't imagine what that sound must have been like, okay? An old timer taught me this trick, and it was to carry a thethoscope with you. People don't make mistakes on purpose, but people make mistakes, and I carried one for years in my truck. You use this thethoscope, and you test that line when they tell you it's good, and you listen. If there's product in that line, you're going to hear it hissing. You're going to hear it flowing. Same thing if you're running pigs. There's a video that's been out I've seen on the uh, internet in our welding circles, and it shows these guys with their ears to the pipe. What are they listening for? Well, they were listening for what's called a pig, and I'll make a video about that. It's a, it's, it looks like a bullet going through a barrel of a gun. It cleans the pipe. It does a lot of different things. But you can hear those moving through the pipe with this. But the biggest thing I want you to know, these stuff sculpts are cheap. You don't have to have a high dollar one. But when you go to cut this pipe, 375 wall, I, I cut one the other day just to tell you, it should take about uh, seven to ten seconds to get this hot enough to kindling temperature, which is when it turns orange before it gets real liquidy, and you can punch through it. If it's taking longer than that on 375 wall, and less than that on 250 wall, and just a little more on 500 wall, you need to stop and go tell somebody something's not right here. I'm Gerald W. Brister. you got to be your own safety guy.